This is the Photon Tunland. It is good looking, it is big, it's a bucky. It even has a 4x4 system. Most importantly though, the one characteristic that will instantly define it in the minds of most SA buyers is the fact that it's Chinese. For a double cab bucky, the interior of the Tunland is actually pretty impressive. It's got a decent audio system, it's got USB, it's got Bluetooth, it's got very good air conditioning, electric windows, and a couple of airbags. In fact, the Tunland as a whole seems well built. Is it as good as that of more established brands? Perhaps not quite, but it comes very, very, very close, and it is priced well below the more established double cabs. What will probably impress potential buyers most, though, is its engine. The Tunland's power plant isn't Chinese at all, it's American. The Tunland boasts the very first Cummins engine designed for use in a light commercial vehicle. The Cummins 2.8 litre engine develops 120 kilowatts of power and 360 newton meters of torque. Now that's exactly the same amount, or more or less, that the Hilux makes. So there's no doubt who they were aiming at when they built this vehicle. Can it compare with a vehicle such as the Hilux? Well, the Tunland feels quite rugged and old school, but then again, so does the Hilux. Its engine is also loud, but that isn't unforgivable in a vehicle that essentially remains a workhorse. The Cummins engine wasn't the only thing that was sourced from an existing manufacturer. They also used Dana axles, that's the same brand that Jeep uses, and it's also got a Borg Warner transfer case. The Tunland is large as large as other new double cabs such as the Ranger, BT-50 and Isuzu KB. But it doesn't feel underpowered though. Its engine has the power and torque needed to push that bulky frame along. You won't mistake the Tunnel for anything but a utilitarian diesel bucket. But for a utilitarian diesel bucket, it actually does very well. The Photon's biggest problem is its price. Yes, it's a lot cheaper than the other, more famous double cabs out there but it's still pricey for a Chinese bucky. The fact of the matter is, we've been conditioned to expect less from Chinese manufacturers and to therefore expect their vehicles to be a lot cheaper. The Tunland is rewriting the rules. Yes, it's pricey, but it really can compete with the more established brands. If manufacturers in the US, Japan and Europe weren't worried about the Chinese until now, the Tunland is a clear message that they should start taking Chinese manufacturers very seriously. Okay.